the first mission. I am going to take a run at it and see how this works out. I already spoke about this in my other video, but uh, I feel like I wasn't playing to the fullest potential and I needed to get used to the controls, make some modifications. I've switched the um, strafe button to RB, which actually makes the gameplay a lot more smoother in terms of uh, fighting enemy AI. The other thing was that there was a bit of stutter which seemed to sort itself out after loading this same level a couple of times. I think it preloads and catches so that worked out pretty well. The modification in the weapon system can be a bit confusing because you have a bunch of charms and armor. I think they stack. You don't really equip them per se. I think that you stack them. Or maybe you do equip them. I haven't gotten to that part yet. And when you reach the town, which is like, um, it's a hub area, uh, that's where you do most of your modification and you know, weapon management, charm management, and they really do affect gameplay. Um, the enemies in this game are like hordes. They keep spawning, they constantly keep sw spawning, and I think... Um, if you are playing the bounty missions, the side missions, the enemies keep spawning. You just have to complete your objective. Melee wise, I think the coolest thing about this game is like the execution kills. They really get you out of a bind. Anytime your health is low or um, you're on the verge of um, death or don't have enough ammo for your weapons, the melee kill is what saves you. Cause it and that mechanic works pretty well here. It's a little bit janky, but it does the job for the most part. The sliding in this game also really helps you dodge. There's no real crouch button per se. What you do is when you click the strafe button, he, uh, he automatically crouches. The areas are not like on a 2D plane. You have so much free space to travel upwards and downwards. Vertical and horizontally that you really have to zip past your enemies, go up and down. They could shoot you from anywhere, they could spawn anywhere. So there's a lot of verticality in this game. Something you don't see in a lot of modern shooters. And I would say this game has more verticality than Doom. Uh, there's more jumping up. It doesn't have puzzles per se. The jumps are actually very well done. But it has a lot of verticality. As you can see in this level, you go jump all the way down. Uh, you think you might die, but you won't. You land safely for the most part. Um, jumps don't kill you, uh, at least not from what I've experienced. I think it has to be like for if you fall into some kind of a pit. Um, the interesting thing in this game is that <clears throat> your weapons are basically effective against most enemies. Um, unlike Doom where you are 
or Doom Eternal where you're coerced into picking one weapon per enemy and using that. Uh, in this game, you can pretty much use any weapon on any enemy. The only difference would be is that you'd execute them a little faster or a little slower, but it won't really affect you in a way that it does with Doom Eternal where you're forced to uh, play with a weapon that you don't want to play with. For example, I like pistols and I am given the option to play with a pistol. I can mod the pistol into a killing machine and kill enemies. I'm not forced into something like uh, use the shotgun to kill this guy or use a sniper for that guy. Uh, there are some enemies that you can't just kill with a gun because they have shields uh, if you don't aim for the head. And for that there's melee kills. Melee kills are effective with pretty much most enemies except I think the bigger ones, the bosses. And the melee kills are very brutal. Very, very brutal. They're uh, nicely done, you know. Not... Uh, I won't say they're on the level of Doom, because in Doom you're fighting monsters, in this you're actually fighting humans. And I prefer fighting humans over monsters, that's just my thing. Monsters just seem, especially in Doom, they seem a bit cartoony. And I like the vibe this game gives out where um, I'm fighting actual humans. Uh, there are humans with elemental effects. Some of them have poison and I believe electricity. Uh, there's a dude that's pretty much like the Hulk. I think you're going to see him uh, somewhere here now. He should be coming up. And the overall aesthetic is so pleasing. It's so pleasing to look at. It's It's got this underbelly vibe to it. And I, I guess that's what Necromanda is about. It's, it really appeals to me. Kind of reminds me of some of the underground levels of Rage 2. Um, another game I really love. Uh, the interesting thing is that Rage 2, I think has taken some inspiration from Necromanda, at least from the look of it. Uh, it has the punk rocker kind of look to it, and Necromanda also has uh, the original punk kind of gang style vibe to it. So they both have some similarities, especially in the underground levels. Although Necromanda is not an open world game, which I think um, is a good thing. You know, it's more focused. Uh, Rage 2 is fun as an open world game, but Necromanda has this focus, this, this guy, you who's like the Hulk. And that focus really helps. You know, you're, you're funneled into this one goal, goal that you must achieve uh, against swarms and swarms of enemies. What I like most about this aspect is that it really gives that feel that you're some sort of uh, John Wick kind of character where you melee shoot, melee shoot, but you're so focused reaching that one objective which you must get to. Uh, you're not distracted by anything, you just have to get there somehow. And the levels uh, add to it. They uh, make you feel like you're part of a world, like you're living in this um, dungeon-esque underground uh, gang territory world. So the whole aesthetic fits into the gameplay. You know, e each thing about the aesthetic is 
used with the uh, game mechanics. Like you can see, there's a lot of jumping going around, there's a lot of dodging going around, there's enemies spawning everywhere, and despite them not having great AI, because the levels are so big, they can spawn in so many locations that it does give you the sense of challenge that is required. And this is just in normal mode. I think it's much more fun in hard mode for gamers who are uh, younger and more uh, suited to fast action playing. Um, I can't play the way I used to. As you can see, I'm playing very poorly. Um, I guess that just happens with age when, you, when you're no longer able to twitch shoot. Uh, as fast as you could. Uh, however, I still enjoy it. You know, it's still enjoyable. In normal mode, it's pretty enjoyable. And the the mechanics with the guns and the armor, you know, they, you can compensate for your ability to twitch shoot. It, I mean, unlike Unreal Tournament '99, where it's more skill based, Necromanda is not um, very skill based. It it can be if you want it to be, but because of the uh, weapon modding, you can definitely compensate for uh, the lack of uh, twitch shooting skill. I'm skipping past the cutscenes because I don't really want to get into the story. The story is sort of there, but you know. So this is the look at the first mission. And uh, you can see the loot rewards you get. So the system is where you put uh, each weapon set in a particular backpack. So pistols in one backpack, heavy weapons in one, and uh, your mid-tier weapons in one. There's a special also, I'm not sure what that is. Uh, I'm still confused about the armor because you get these four slots and I think you can put four pieces of armor on it I'm not sure if they stack or how they affect and there's this charm section so yeah that's mission one and I hope you liked it thanks for watching